Okay, so welcome everyone and to those joining us live on Facebook to um, the last session of People of the Book, uh, which is a session I did throughout June in honor of Israel's book week or month, depending if you, you buy in the bookstores or if you buy uh, only at the special fairs. And throughout this month, we basically been talking about um, the development of Israeli literature, uh, the his the also popular Israeli books today in America and in the in Israel specifically, and also about the Hebrew Book Week and the Jewish Book Week that um, Jill here uh, has helped with as well. Um, so Jill here is a librarian at B'nai Israel, and I did this in cooperation with her, and she's been a big help and a big part of these sessions as well. Um, so today, this is basically actually my last proper session I'm doing for the first year of my shlichot, so I'm really excited. And, um, and the idea is to end this session with a fun thing that I'm doing with my fellow shlichim, who I really appreciate that are here with me and helping to present. And what we are doing is that we're going to basically be sharing our must-have recommended Israeli books. So most of them have been translated, and I've collected the links to Amazon that you can buy them from, um, or you can just see the title via Amazon in that case. And I also added Hebrew, so if you want to you know, copy-paste and add the Hebrew, then you can do that as well. Um, so that's basically what we're going to be doing today. I will be starting. And hopefully our final speaker will be joining us. And if not, we have three other great shlichim and speakers who will be sharing their favorite books. And also, if you have any questions about the books or other recommended, related, whatever, then um, please feel free. Uh, and yeah, so I think we will begin with that. And um, great. So I'm going to start. And I'll just introduce myself to see people who maybe know other shlichim and don't know me. So my name is Netta Asner Minster. I am the shlicha at Bnei Israel Congregation in Maryland. And uh, I have two books to recommend. Um, so the first is actually one of my really favorite Hebrew books. And I'm going to actually put myself on spotlight so you can see me better. Um, it's this one. It's called The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem, Markata Yofi Shel Yerushalayim. Um, so I worked in a bookstore when this first came out, and it came out 2013. It's basically, um, it is a historical novel, and it is also um, a love story, basically. So it's about three generations of the Armoza family who live in Jerusalem. They are a Spanish Jewish family who moved to, uh, who, are, who, are in, who are in living in Jerusalem from the time of the Ottomans up until the 70s. So that's where the three generations of the book comes into. But it's really also a love story type thing because um, they're, the women of the family basically say that they are cursed and um, Thank you, Yael. That is true. Um, they, so the, the, the women of the family say that they are cursed and that, they, that the man that they were supposed to be with, they never will have love. And the daughter, Gabrielle, who's telling it from her perspective, um, really wants to make sure that she does not, doesn't fall into that curse. So on one hand, it's a love story. So it's very much that classy love thing that I, that I personally really like. But at the same time, it's historical as well because all these things that happen in Jerusalem, the, the description of the shulk and the and like center city and the building of the Jewish agency and the development of all these places are really described so well. So I remember when I worked in the bookstore, I was recommending books. It was so much easier as a Jerusalemite to recommend this book and be like, oh, you know, there's so many places about Jerusalem that they recommend and everything. And it really actually sold better in Jerusalem than the rest of Israel, interestingly enough. Um, so I personally really recommend it and it has been translated into English into many languages. And Yael is correct that um, they're actually doing a TV show sometime soon. I also want to show a, a really brief video. It's a two minute video about the author herself. Uh, Cause I think that she herself has a really interesting story. This is the first book she wrote later on in her life. And she speaks two minutes in English. So why not share that with you guys as well? Um, and I hope that that really shares why, what's unique about her and what people fell in love with regarding the book as well. So I'll just share that. It's under two minutes, and then I will recommend the next book. My name is Sarit Ishai Levi. I'm the writer of The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem, an Israeli bestseller. I was born and raised in Jerusalem, 
eighth generation to a Jewish Sephardic family. After the army, I settled in Tel Aviv and created a career in journalism. My career of some achievements worth mentioning. I was the first Israeli with my editor to meet and interview PLO leader Yasser Arafat in the PLO headquarters in Beirut during the first Lebanon war. In the same assignment, I also interviewed pilot Aharon Achiaz, a prisoner of war, and brought a signs of life from him to his family and to the people in Israel. After the tragic assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, I interviewed his wife, Mrs. Leah Rabin, that raised a questions and speculations about the murder that created a huge argument among the Israeli society. I've been all over the world. I traveled a lot. I interviewed presidents, prime ministers, movie stars, worldwide figures. I covered wars and also a magnificent events. But it was only when I reached 65 that I fulfilled my real true dream to write a novel. My novel, The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem, became straight ahead a huge success and a great bestseller. Sold almost 200,000 copies, translated to many languages, and it's about to become a movie. In the age of 65, I proved that there's no age to dreams nor to dreamers, no limit at all. You can change and be changed. You can move mountains if you want. Age is only a number in your ID. I hope I'm an inspiration. Please don't stop dreaming. Thank you. I'm the writer. Okay. So um, I find that I found, I saw the two minute video and I found it inspirational myself. And I really do think that age is just a number. And throughout my life, I've been the youngest person wherever I've gone. So I really think it's also you have the direction, just a number. And I'll say it's really hard to kind of in two minutes, basically say why I really think this book is amazing, but I'm a Jerusalemite. I really connected to it. And it's the first, it's a, one of the few books I, I couldn't put down literally. So um, I'm going to put right after I finish my part, I'll put after each person speaks, I'll put the links in the chat so you guys can check out the books. And the next book, unfortunately, is not translated. I'm going to be really, really brief about it, but I think it's one of the coolest books ever. And I had to share it with you. Um, so right you have you know field guides for like flowers or for birds or whatever so there's this book called magdir dosim so it means a field guide book for religious people and you can't see it because it's dummy and my husband's not here to close the blinds for me so here you can see you see there's religious people on the bottom so it basically is a book that describes to you by the ultra orthodox society in israel so just to even give to show you an example um so there is an explanation in the beginning about you know different important things about the ultra orthodox society generally and then when you go into it they have pages like this that here god i'm trying to here you see like you can see how they're dressed and everything there's like pictures about the specific colors and the specific you know things they put on their head and i said oh god it would have been so much better if they actually had pictures of people at the same time they'd probably be really creepy so they have drawings instead and um so i think it's incredible because i've learned so much about the intricate differences between lithuanian sephardic specific hasidic sex and it's just a great project and i've learned so much myself uh, about it. Um, unfortunately, it's only in Hebrew, but it's called Magdir Dosim by Moshe Kakon, and he has his own website that he sells it. It's been out since 2015. And I'll share the information as well, but I just really wanted to share about a really unique book that appears in Israel that not only sometimes we find ourselves confused by the variety of ultra-Orthodox, but definitely a lot of Israelis do as well. And that's why this book is here to kind of explain to you who is who. Uh, so that is me. That's the books I want to recommend. And uh, with that, I will now refer, I think, to Avia. Um, great. And I will put you on the spotlight and I will share the links right now about my books. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Uh, thank you, Neta, for inviting me. Um, I'm going to talk about Badolina. So, first of all, I have to say that I'm reading a lot. I love books. I, it's like my my escapism i love to to be in a second in another life and to think about uh, different stories since i was a very uh, young girl 
Um, Badolina is a book, look, it's so, it's tiny and it's pretty and there is a lot of um, paintings also in, inside. Um, and actually it's a gift I got, um, I think I got it two years ago before I traveled to India, my friend got it. And the story started in, starts in India and Gabi Nissan is the author. Um, and it's telling about um, a journalist that um, meet a king, the king of Badolina. It's a fiction, it's not a real place, of course. Um, but what I like about this book is really it makes me, it made me feel um, that everything is possible um, and all the, the story is that they are going together to Israel. Um, and this guy, the journalist, tell the story of the king of Badolina in Israel. So they've been in Israel and in China. Um, and for me, it's really, it's showing the Israeli culture in a very um, sarcastic and funny way, but also it catch like moments in time that I'm not sure that I can explain that. Um, and then they, you, you read it and you're like, oh my God, this is so true. This is so Israeli. Um, and I love it to feel it about a book when someone catch something, it's so accurate, but you, you can't, you don't think about it and it's just true. Um, and what I take from this book, so this book encourage um, self-love and self-awareness and that you are responsible about your destiny. And I love this attitude. I think that we can be, each one of us are the queen and the kings of their own world. Um, so this is what I'm taking from this book. And I, I was so inspired by it. It's a book you can read in like seriously um, two hours. It's so it's short and it's fun and you can see how it looks inside. It's very like um, easy um, and it's like I, I, I think it's like a treat. It's like a candy. <laughs> um, so I want to say like two quotes that I took from it and I'm going to translate it couldn't find uh, the translation nowhere, so this is like my free, um, free tra translation. Uh, first of all, is that to, lo to love something uh, because it belongs to you, it's not love, it's attachment, um, and it's very true. I think that if you like something because it belongs to you, but it's because, you know, if you love something, you will let it go and, be, and let it be free. Um, and I think I really believe in that. Um, and also, uh, someone who don't believe in trouble, the trouble, the troubles uh, lose their um, their interest in him. So if you don't believe in trouble and you don't want that things bad things will happen to you, and you will be, you know, to think of uh, uh, to be optimistic and to think um, good things about your future, or about your friends, and about people in general. It's a, it's a hard work, not all of us can do it. Um, and this is my goal in life to, like in the very difficult moments, still to think about the silver lining. And I have to say, it's really challenging. And every day I'm, I'm like sometimes, and a lot of things happen to us, all of us lately. And uh, so I think it's a test that I'm, it's like for me every day to try to do that. So there are days I'm, it's, I'm successful and there are days I'm not. Um, but every time I need like a, just a small encouragement, a small inspiration, I can take the book and just enjoy it for one or two hours. Um, so I really, really recommend you to read it. Um, and to see more about the Israeli culture, about the Israeli traveling culture, um, and just in general, the general Israeli vibe. Um, yeah, so I'm really gr uh, grateful to my friend who bought it to me. Uh, it was a great present, um, and thank you, Neta, for, for inviting me to tell about it. I really appreciate it. Of course. So I see that Yarden has a question. Um, is it relevant specifically to Avia or is it like a general question? Because if it's relevant to Avia, you feel free to ask right now. Hey, sorry. No, it, not specifically to Avia. I just wanted to know if you could send a list um, later of all of the links to the books. So it's, I'm putting it in the chat after each person speaks. So it's in the okay, chat I right have now. To, I have to go though. So can you send it later? 
No problem. I will send it to you. Then. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> okay, great. So now um, I will put Shy. Oh, wait, Jill, you want to say something? Here, Jill. The book I just found on Amazon. It's called Vagilina Black and White Edition, and it is in English. So you, I just want to let you know. So I put in the chat the Badulina in English as well. So the version that Via showed also appears in English and Amazon. Oh, so okay, I said, that's what I was saying, but she, uh, I didn't think that you knew that. Avia. Oh, okay. Avia couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, no, so I, I, that's why I found okay. it. <laughs> I couldn't find the translation. Like, I, I know it, it, it's there, but I couldn't find like the quotes. Uh, translated so oh, okay. oh. we translated I, I, I hope it was okay <laughs> and now I will uh, put shy on the spotlight and he has a book to share as well um, that yeah that I, yeah go free and then I'll say something afterwards okay uh, hi everyone I'm Shash Kanazi I'm the Shalekh at the Poses JCC of Northern Virginia and uh, thank you Neta for inviting me to join this evening I'm going to share the screen and tell you about uh, the book that I chose, which is, um, oh, this is not the English uh, translation, I'm sorry, but uh, Someone to Run With, Mishu Lagutsito, I apologize for this. Um, it's, a, it's a book that was written in uh, the year 2000, then became a movie, actually, in 2006. Um, and similar to Netta, you know, us, the people from Jerusalem, the Jer Jerusalemites, uh, we have a strong connection to the city. Um, and this book's the, this book takes us on an adventure, sort of, sort of a scavenger's hunt. Um, a young boy that takes a summer job at a, at a kennel for, for dogs and uh, is told, take this dog with a leash and let the dog lead you to its owners. And he starts running around all of Jerusalem and seeing establishments, seeing the history of the city, seeing different places. And you can learn so much about the city, similar to what Netta told about uh, the beauty queen of Jerusalem. Uh, and you get to learn so much about the city, but also get an insight to an, an kind of underground uh, story of the city, of the children, uh, of the Yaldea Kikar, or the children who we used to sit in Kikar Tzion, which we see on the photo. Um, so it's based on or inspired by the stories of those troubled youth who would spend their nights on the street sometimes. Um, and it's, it's a great adventure. I'm not going to do more to ruin the story, but for me as well, it talks a lot about... Um, street musicians, and I myself, I had to put this out here, I'm also a street musician playing on the street and on Kikal Tzion, exactly the place that we saw before. So uh, this is my very close relation to the book that I've read many, many times. Um, once again, it takes us on this adventure, uh, a beautiful story that, that has a lot of compassion in it, a connection between people. Uh, I don't want to, you know, give you more uh, um, uh, spoilers on that. I will share this. Whoop. Sorry, I'm going to share something here on the chat that actually a while ago, Ashley Ha created a, an escape room based on the book that you can go on on this link. It's wonderful. It gives you the outline of the book. It gives you an adventure. It tells you, it teaches you a lot about Jerusalem and about the book. So I hope you can enjoy that. Um, yeah, and that is my book, Mishu Laruzito, Someone to Run With by uh, David Grossman, who's a very well-known author. And the book is translated, not like the photo that I showed that was incorrect, but it translated to English, and I really do recommend this book. Thank you, Shai. And I will also note, um, Jill is here, but um, the book also uh, appears at the Benet Library for those who are members of Benet or just living in the DMV area. Uh, Benet has really an amazing library. And, um, and if you're interested in that book, then it's in the library, and feel free to either reach out to me so I can or refer to you to Jill or to Jill directly if you have her email and uh, she can help you with getting the book. Um, so I'll now put Yael uh, on the spotlight. And I have to say that Yael, what Ria is recommending is really interesting. And um, for people who were here perhaps last week or saw the recording, I will relate to that afterwards. I think it really, the fact that she chose what she chose really shows something about books in Israeli society at the moment. So thank you so much. And here you go, Yael. So I actually chose um, a translated book and not an Israeli book because um, I don't see a lot of like, I don't read a lot of Hebrew books or see movies in Hebrew. I just 
like the American culture. And I think that very described that um, because I grew up in this house where my mom just loved um, translated books. That's what she reads. Um, that's her addiction. And I'll show you what um, I wanted to show you what is book addiction. Um, I hope you can see my screen. But this is basically my library right now at home. My mom took this picture yesterday. All this area on top and on top of the TV is always is like all my mom's books. Um, so I grew up in this house where my mom reads a different book every day um, and eventually became a thing that I don't read books. Um, I took the wrong path on that, but I don't really um, read a lot of books and every Yom Kippur, that's my thing. I read one book and I finish it on Yom Kippur and that's what I do. Um, that's my piece and like everything that I do for that day. Um, and I try, like, I don't have time or I don't put enough, uh, priority to read books during regular weeks. Um, so Yom Kippur is my special day to read books. And since the quarantine, I started reading a much, like much more books. For some reason, it became a thing during this period of time. Um, and my mom is very proud now. Um, but she recommended three years ago a book named um, Reshimata Mishalot, uh, The Life List uh, by Lori Nelson Spielman. Um, and Lori wrote a lot of other books that I will talk about, but this book is um, her bestseller. And it's that's the first book I read and it just, I jumped in and couldn't stop reading it. Um, and every book that she write, um, have like a certain way to inspire you to do something. So this book actually talks about a wish list that a 14 years old wrote. And when she see it 15 years after, um, because she was forced to see it 15 years after in a different way, um, she started to, follow her list and try to make everything come true. Um, so it's really inspiring to think about how you, um, like you make yourself um, wish lists and do not follow them. And then suddenly you have the opportunity to take your wishes forward. Um, and this kind of inspired me to make my own wish list for the new year. I told you I'm reading it on Yom Kippur, so that's my thing. Um, and then the second year, the year following, um, I wrote, I wrote, um, like I read Avnei Aslicha, The Sweet Forgiveness, um, which also inspired me to think about, um, again, Yom Kippur, same like <laughs> days of forgiven and um, ask forgiveness. And it kind of took me on a trip to understand how am I, like, how do I want to apologize to myself? um and in that way so it was kind of interesting to read those and then the last book that i read of her was this corona um i didn't read it on yom kippur because yom kippur this past two years of yom kippur i actually worked um so during this um time i started reading this book it took me like two days to read it because i just jumped in um and this book was the only book that was never published in English. So it was published in German and Hebrew, but never in English. So I, and I will say, I actually recommend to read it in Hebrew because the quotes are nicer in Hebrew for sure. Um, and it kind of inspired me to start reading books in different ways and remember quotes and make myself a list of quotes that inspire me and that whenever someone say something that I want to follow um, or want to get inspired from, I just um, write it in my heart notebook. That's how it's called. Machber um, Alev means heart notebook. Um, and I actually told a few of the shlichim here on this Zoom um, quotes from this notebook and try to inspire other people from this notebook as well. Um, and I, again, this book was not, I 
it's not published in English, so those translates like my translation with Neta's help as well. Um, so I'll read it in Hebrew and in English, but I'll start with the English. For every time you complain, say, th th say thank you three times. Um, do not declare an explanation. Oh, I can say exclamation points for someone who dots you with a comma. Um, when life pulls the carpet under your feet, a dance floor is formed. A wise traveler looks at what happened in her previous journey before mapping the next one. Don't confuse what's important with what is significant. We get a second chance three, uh, 365 times a year. It's called midnight. So, I have to say those Hebrew, in Hebrew, those quotes say a lot, like I feel like the, tr the translation is much better in Hebrew um, and something about how they formed it in Hebrew kind of make more sense to me. Um, and I just got, every time I read a sentence, it kind of connected to a story that I had in the following week. So, for example, don't confuse what's important to what is significant. I actually told it to two shlichim here on this conversation because it was meaningful to all of us and we needed to hear that. Um, and we kind of, I took it to myself that every time something happens and I don't want to be dramatic, I'm like trying to figure out if it's significant or it's actually important. Um, so those are the quotes um, that got me inspired from this book um and i'll do stop share i see some people raising their hands um but this book i definitely recommend um and i'll explain why i think it's sorry that i'm talking a lot but um it's the reason why i recommend those books is because a lot of israelis are they love american movies and american tv shows and i feel those stories take you to feel like american vibe into it they take you to feel like you are in a movie and you see you can see it alive um and i think that also something that i really love and i feel like i know those people and i know who i'm talking about so i connect very well to that yes okay so we have Tybo and joseph who have questions so i'll Tybo, i'll let you ask first, because I saw your hand first. Uh, and then uh, Joseph, I see that you're raised as well. So I'll let you ask okay. afterwards. I hope they're two fast ones. I'm an old person and I just tried to look it up and didn't find it. I don't know what it means, this is first question, to dot with a comma. That's one. And the second is I just want to be totally clear that the mother who is the reader is also the mother who teaches belly dance. It is. It's a very talented mom. Uh, <laughs> she's multitasking. She, I don't know how she has time for everything, but um, uh, she usually reads her books um, very late at night. Um, but yes, um, so dot with a comma. This is why it translates much more, like much better in Hebrew. Um, basically, nikud is the vows. Um, and comma is sort of a vow, um, and basically what it says that we, like, and I'll translate it to my world, like, and um, dating world um, in that way, when someone is, like, sometimes you see people and you are dating them and you see them like, oh, those are my, like, this is my person, and I know that for sure, but that person eventually see you like otherwise um and this this sentence like was really inspiring me on the same time that i felt like oh this person actually don't see me with an exclamation point this person see me with a comma so um and that helps me just feel stronger um and i change my thoughts and i put a comma after his title as well so it's all good <laughs> um but this is something that you get inspired there are so many um like temporary people in our life sometimes. And this is something that can make us stronger when we don't see them anymore. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I see Jill, you're raising your hand, but Joseph, yeah, I'll let I you ask wanted, a question I first. I wanted to compliment. Jill, Jill no. I just, oh, just want to ask, I just want to let Joseph um, ask first because he had his hand raised and then I'm happy for you I'm to sorry. ask a question as well. No, it's great. Um, Joseph, oh. yeah, feel free. I have, a, I have one question about your mother and one question about the slide. Um, so do you mean she finishes a book every day? She finished a book 
every other day or so, yes. Um, but now she started reading uh, from a tablet, so she's much faster. Um, that's, she that's, read it much faster. That's very sure. amazing. Uh, yes. The question I had was, like the slide was on too, what are the Hebrew words that distinguish significant and important? So important is chashuv, um, and significant is mashmauti. Mash Marty? No. Mashmauti. With an ein. With an ein in the oh. middle. Yeah. Sorry, I said it fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. We also, have, we, all, we also have a Hebrew lesson here. It's awesome. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of things combined. Um, and Jill, yeah. Do you want to well, feel free? Yes. I want to applaud you for keeping a book of quotes. I did that for many, many years. And anytime I, now with my Kindle, I underline it. And I never go back and write it down, but it's just, I love to read and books speak to me in that way. And, um, you know, I don't read like your mom, but my goal this year is 50 books and I'm already up to about 26. So Good for you. I hope I'm going to make it. <laughs> and I wanted to make a plug for a book, not necessarily because I think it's an amazing piece of literature, but it's, it's a good read because it was written by a man from our congregation. And it was called Father, Son, Stone. We have it in the library. His name is Alan Goodman, and he is a lawyer and a prosecutor. So there is some law written in there, but the premise of the book is, what if the um, tabernacle wasn't really in Jerusalem, that that was just a ruse? And they reveal where it is. It's really, it's a nice, it's a fun read. I would say the beginning starts a little bit technical as far as you know, a lot of law terms not terms, but a lot of legalese, but then the book just takes off. So it's called Father, Son, Stone by Alan Goodman. And again, we have in the library and, um, you know, so that's one I would recommend. Okay. And I have a million I'd recommend, but I won't recommend anymore. <laughs> I just thought Thank that was you so much, Jill. Jerusalem might be fun for all of you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Jill. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, so I do want to add like another note from what Ed was saying, and then our last speaker, Oh, who is here, will uh, share. Um, so, what Yael, I mean, Yael highlighted a lot of things, which shows also her personal connection to the book, which I super appreciate, and thank you so much. But um, it highlights another thing that we were speaking about during this whole series, by the fact that, trend, that the fact that Israel has become a spoken language has created the fact that books that are in other languages get translated into Hebrew. So when Jojo Moyes was really popular here and Me Before You and all those books were like, you know, becoming movies and everything, they were popular in Israel as well um, in 2018, more or less. You know, I, I was looking at an article and the most, and the books that were most taken out of the library were all the Jojo Moyes books, basically. So you have a popularity of a lot of translated books uh, in Israel. And I think Yael, is showing that like you're able to connect personally in various ways to these translated books and it also shows how israel is becoming global in a sense that the books that you read here as americans you might be able to talk to with israelis as well even if they read it in hebrew um just somebody was telling me that they're reading um harry potter in hebrew i don't know who it was but that it was super amusing and confusing because all the names are different uh but it's, it's an experience it's a way to learn a language if you're able to read the book that you love in a different language as well and you already know the term terms and the words that are used there um so that's just another side note as well and with that with further ado i'll now share all who will be sharing uh two books here you go Hey, how are you doing? Um, so I just will start with introduce myself because I think that is the first time that I, th I meet most of you. So I'm Or Cohen. I'm the Shlicha in uh, Rhode Island in the GCC in Providence. Um, before two years ago, I left the Navy after nine years and I was an officer uh, naval in the Israeli uh, Navy and I was a commander of patrol boat. That's it background and I think it makes sense why, why I choose the, the two books that I will present to you. Uh, the first one is book of Shulamit Lapid, who is no Yay Lapid. She is a, uh, his mother and she, she wrote amazing books and for me I, I would love to start with this book because I, I read it when I was a teenager, I think maybe 15 or 16 years old, 
And for me, it was very special because I read, that was the first book that I read after a long time. That is the book that backed the reading for me. Um, and it's like, it's kind of like short book is not heavy like Harry Potter or something. It's very, very easy and very, very movement and very, very in action. And the book called Ta'ut Anosh, and if I translate it in free translation, is a human mistake. And the story takes place uh, in Europe about an Israeli female spy in the Mossad. And it was really, really nervous and action. Like I feel that I read a book like in action movie and I cannot stop read. And I remember that weekend that I finished it only in Shabbat. I started in Shabbat morning and I finished on Shabbat afternoon. And it was amazing. Uh, and the point about this book is not the kind of the reading and the writing that Shulamit wrote that is that for me, I know that I was a teenager and it was before the army and it so inspired me, is what people can do for the country. Uh, what they lose and why they lost and what they still in the back when they go to do something for the country is for me, it's feel like an adventure. Uh, and, and for me, it's, it's the really comparing to the experience that I really accepted this time to go to the army, to the Navy. Um, so for me, it's open a really new world about kind of like spies and the Mossad and the IDF. And for me, it's really, I just feel the, the fire gun in my hands and I just feel very inspired that the next thing that I want to do is to join the army and I don't care that I was 16 years old. Uh, and for me, that is everyone that no, no way, um, never read a book is, for example, my sisters, they don't read the books. Uh, I am the only one that they read books <laughs> in my family. And when they ask me which book you recommend to start, I say this one, because it's kind of like short and really, really, you feel that you end the story and you finish it very, very fast. Um, and this book really take me to the second book and the second book is the Mossad unfortunately the last book we have that thank you Neta unfortunately the last the, the first book I don't really sure that is translate to English yes it is. that is is translation to English and it's a it's a book about a real operation of the Mossad and is separate for chapters and each chapter is operation and you can read it, you can leave it and back it after. And this book is to know and to realize how the Israeli is crazy. Because any operation is, you think that someone take it from any action movie <coughs> and you just feel you, you, read it, you read the book and you, just, you say, oh my God, that is happen in real and you just laugh and smile. And I read it, and that is before the army. And I read it, and I, and I, and I come to the chapter about operation in the Navy. <coughs> Sorry. And I read that, and I say, oh my God, that is so crazy. The Navy did a big operation to take a, uh, a Mossad agent from Israel to Syria to bring two female, two Jewish female that they accept to get married in Syria and they don't know. And Israeli really take operation with the Mossad to bring them back to Israel. And for me, this operation really opened my mind and I feel so crazy and so proud to, to take part in the Navy. And that is only one of the operations that's in the book of the Mossad. And I think that there are in a second book is continue for the Mossad is called Mechemet Atzlalim, if I remember not right. I don't really remember if it's translated to English. But for me, it's really put in different point of view what Israel, the country, can do for the people, for Jewish all over around the world. And if I start with the first book, so what the people can do for the country, 
The second book is what the country can do for the other. And it's really crazy. And when I, I was in the Navy and I take part in a lot of operation, a lot of operation that I cannot tell you. And I cannot explain to my mother, to my father that I go to operation and I'm back. And actually, to be honest, I don't really know what happened at the end of the operation. But one of my commanders tell me that sometimes you be lucky to take per part in operation that when you're back from the operation and you read the news, you just can lie back and smile. And I am so glad that I have some chance and sometimes that I can't do that. And I know how much Israel is too crazy that to keep the country safe and to keep the Jewish story as it is. And it's so crazy. And I, I, it's, sometimes it sounds kitschy, but that is it. And for me to spend nine years in the army, in the Navy, it's, it means something. And I do it for a big goal and not just because I get the money. Uh, so I really, really recommend to read the book just to make sense what Israel can do for the Jews around the world. Um, and that is, thank you. Thank you so much, all. I appreciate it. Um, amazing explanation also about your personal connection to the books as well. So I really appreciate it. And I have the book here as well. And actually, I really wanted to talk about it too. And then all was like, no, I want to talk about it. So I let her talk about it. But it incredibly fast paced and I would read on the metro. I read it this year and I would, I could not put it down. Like I would be on the metro and I would read this book as well. I was so inspired that actually next year for Brene, I have this series called Israel's Biggest Operations um, that I will be doing until January. So <laughs> I already have that plan and inspiration from this book. Um, so with that, I wanted to conclude and before people start going away, uh, I wanted to share something in the chat first. I see that there are new people. Um, me and a few other shlichim who are on this call um, are part of a project called Life Online, which uh, we basically share content together and we cooperate like something like this or also basically in one, we create our own community where we're sharing different activities you guys can join. So Shai is very into uh, music and Israeli news. I'm very into history and Judaism and if the eyes are artistic, but also has a whole vibe of kibbutz and whatnot, and Yael is cooks, and oh, maybe we'll someday be a part of it. But for now, uh, she, for, for now, she agreed to join. I really appreciate that. Um, we each bring our own unique uh, vibe, and I gave the, I sent the information, I put it here, where you can uh, join the weekly email or our Facebook group. And I would recommend the weekly email because I'm in charge of it. So it'll, it's on Friday, it's sent out, and it's really short and sweet, and it shares the upcoming event that we do for the following week. Um, so with that, um, I want to thank all of our speakers for speaking, and I really, it goes to, goes to show that we can talk about popular Israeli books, we can talk about, um, you know, the development of Israeli literature, but at the end of the day, when you have people and their personal opinions of the books they love and the books they connect to, that's where you really hear the personal recommendations, and you really want to read those books, so I hope that I may help you want to read some of those books, and I wanted to add that the English version of the Mossad is also in the B'nai library. Um, so feel free to either reach out to Jill or use the link as well to get any of these books. And if anybody's interested in the list, I'm happy to send it via email. You can either reach out to me, right next to as there's only one in the world pretty much um, at B'nai, especially at B'nai Israel, uh, and or like via Life Online as well. I'm happy to send the list that I've already had and prepared. Um, with that, we, if anybody has any questions, and I see Joseph has a question, and now is exactly the time. So Joseph here, go uh, feel free to ask a question. Okay, first I just wanted to say, I feel so lucky that somehow I discovered this group because between you and Rotem and Shai, You've given me so many hours of wonderful things. And uh, so I want to thank you for that. But I did have a question just about, because like I've noticed sometimes, I don't, my Hebrew is like inter, low intermediate or something. Mm -hmm. And I notice sometimes on TV shows where you'll be hearing the English and then in the Hebrew, it'll say the setter. 
And you know, it was like eight words for somebody to <laughs> this letter. So I'm wondering if if any of you uh, have read the books in both languages and do the English translations of Hebrew books ever do them justice and maybe even vice versa for, uh, what do you recommend, do you? So uh, um, I, read, I read books, book I, read, I personally read books both in Hebrew and English and I really try to read the original um, because I really think that the original is, is the original and that's it. At the same time, I will note um, that when I was in, you know, I just finished my degree recently and always if you would write your paper in English, you would get to write an extra, you know, half a page or a page depending on how many words or pages you were supposed to write. So it really is a thing that Hebrew is way more concise than English. You can say a lot more and a lot less in Hebrew. Um, but uh, I, I person I don't know if anybody else has read a book both in Hebrew and English. I personally, Avia has. Okay, so maybe you want to share about how that was. So I have to say that when I've I've been in high school, I also um I learned like uh, two more units in English, and it's actually it's called translation, and it's very interesting to learn how you translate from English to Hebrew and vice versa because. It's just, it, Israel is such a, a cultural language, but also like you can see how a very long sentence become very short. And also in English, there are words that are not translated directly to Hebrew, so you have to use more Hebrew words. So it's like work both sides. And um, now I'm reading Harry Potter in English and in Hebrew because I want like to improve my my English and I think it's a get great way um, and it's very interesting to see and uh, the translation. So I think it's like it's a whole, if you actually learn how to do it and you actually, there is like a professional term you use when you translate uh, between the language. So yes, I think it's very, it's, it's a great experience for people who want to learn Hebrew or English to, to try to read the same book in the different languages, from my opinion. I'll just, just one more question for everybody. Yeah. Is there any book that you think of all those mentioned today that would be relatively easy in Hebrew? What would be the easiest book of those that were mentioned today? Um, or there none? Avia, do you think it would be Badolina? So one of Via mentioned the Badolina, Badulina. Um, it's it's short and it's a, like a fairy tale, but at the same time, it's an analogy to the Israeli society. So that's the shortest one. Um, I'll just I'll just add that a lot of the books that we did talk about a lot of them are coming without vows, so it's sometimes hard for people to read without vows. So if you have like good Hebrew and you know how to read it and it's easy for you, um, every book will be like it's not every book, but a lot of books will be easy to read. But the vows are important sometimes. Yeah, I'll if just, I can add something. Yeah. Uh, first, if you read it in Hebrew, so. I just can recommend you as I read in English, read it on the morning. You, most of the people read the books at night before sleep and you cannot read it in some language that is not your mom language. So I read English only in the morning. And the second thing is to read a book before you watch a movie. I, mm -hmm. For me, it's very, very hard to read a book, the same book that I read in different language. But for me, I can read a book that I know that will have a movie and I can, if something I miss, I can imagine after. You can watch it before, you can watch it after. But for me, something visual is more, is helpful. Thank you. Um, I saw Jill's raising her hand in table, so I saw Jill first. So Jill, feel oh. free to ask. Well, two things. Um, I also find that Without even translation, I also I find that a book is usually a lot better than a movie. Um, so when I want it, when a book is being made into movie, I'm I, that I want to see. I generally read the book first because if I do it the other way, I'm disappointed <laughs> um, because it never lives up to the book. 
Um, so I just like to have the whole story and then I see where they take took liberty. Um, the other thing I wanted to say just on the translation, it's funny because we read two books by the same author in the B'nai Israel book club by um, Ayelet Gunder, Ayelet Goshen Gunder. And the Waking Lions. Waking Lions, right. And then we read The Liar. And one of the things that we thought about the liars, it must have been a different translator. But when we looked it up, it was the exact same translator. We just felt she didn't do as good a job, whereas Waking Lions was, you know, so gripping that the liars sort of left gaps in the language. And so we thought, again, we thought, gosh, the translators must have been different, but they weren't. So it was very interesting. Thank you. I'll also um, just want to add that my grandfather, um, translated the Nechama Leibowitz book. So it's completely different because it's uh, more religious books, but um, he, he always, he would, she, he shared with me a couple of times about how he had discussions with Nechama Leibowitz about what he would choose when, or when translating. He was saying, uh, people who speak English won't understand the terms that you are using. So I need to explain a little bit more, you know, than you would because I need to explain these terms in that case. So um, when translating, you have to think about that as well, about who your audience is and how do you explain it. Uh, whereas in the mother tongue or the original language, somebody might get the, the cultural term automatically. Um, so that's something just to take in consideration. And Taibo, you had a question as well? A comment and then a question for Orr. The comment, you're gonna think I'm being flipped, but I'm really not, that for most American Jews, the only time we read in two languages is Torah which it, which of course is biblical and then if you don't get it this year well triennial you may need another three years but anyway usually for most american jews with a certain subset that's the only experience comparing two languages then especially for some of us who then study with it that's one um okay to ask or let me get her oh in my gallery view. So uh, a yeah. long time ago in my 20s, um, I knew someone named Diana Nyad who happened to be an American endurance swimmer. And then she's written some memoirs. I don't pay attention to TV, but I have this vague recollection. She wound up a TV person. And then because of that, I read all Lynn Cox's books, who's also an um, endurance swimmer. And I just was curious because I quick looked you up because whatever, and I wondered if you still swim and what's happening with the virus in your swimming. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's like a rip of my presentation. <laughs> yeah, I trained in swimming when I was a teenager and when I have to choose if I swim and try to uh, get the ticket to the Olympic game or to go to the Navy, I choose to go to the Navy. Uh, because in Israel, the Israel and Naval uh, Academy, it's a really, really uh, respectful and powerful place. And for me, it's, I feel that my soul is connected to the army, then to go to the, and to keep swim. I, in, in this point, I just feel that I take anything that I can take from the swimming, and I have to look for another adventure uh it's not so easy to swim the word is go so fast and if you don't catch the wave of the word of the swimming you just lose it and i just feel that i have i have a power and very inspired feeling just to find different mountain to climb and to reach and the challenge was the israel naval academy and I have to say that the reason that I swim before <laughs> is bring me more kilometers of, of swimming in the Naval Academy. <laughs> so uh, it's funny, but I keep swimming during the Navy, during the, uh, the course and after in the service. And now after I just changed a little bit to triathlon and after to water polo. So, but it's always my, my life and after, Last year, I was a swimmer instructor. So, yes, everything is close to the water. That is the reason that I am in the ocean state. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to leave. I have another meeting starting at 8.30, but thank you all. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much. And I think I mean, we're concluding now. Um, thank you so much to everyone.
for joining. Uh, I'm really excited to be back. I'm going to come back in August and don't worry, hopefully COVID won't leave me out of the States because I am a citizen, so I don't think they can do that. Um, but we'll see how things can happen in Israel or here. It's very unclear at the moment. Um, I'm supposed to fly with a VIA. We'll see if that happens. Um, <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, thank you so, so much for joining tonight. Uh, and please feel free to tune into the live online content because even if this is my last session, there is so much more going on. And I'm going to be joining other people's sessions because I'm going to be in quarantine for 14 days. So um, with that, I wish you all a good night and a great evening. And adios. Bye, everyone. Shalom. Shalom. Lehitro. Lehitro.